Hello and welcome to the channel. So it's raining today which means I can't go out racing and I thought that instead of that I would put together a quick video about the bargain speed controller I'm currently using in this car. This is an associated B6.3 and the bargain speed controller is this one, the Hobbywing Quick Run 120 Amp. In this video I'm going to go through a few details about the speed controller, uh, some notes on installation and initial setup and also on programming it so that you can get some good settings for racing in various classes. I'll start off with a bit of information about the speed controller. So this is a censored speed controller and that means it has much better low-end response and smoothness which makes it ideal for racing and for any other class where low-end smoothness is very important. Uh, it also means that it's not waterproof out of the box so bear that in mind if you're comparing it against some of the sensorless speed controllers that Hobbywing do that have very similar specs and prices um, which are waterproof um, but the sensorless speed controller doesn't have the same low speed response and isn't quite so suitable for racing. Another thing to bear in mind with this speed controller is that unfortunately even though you can set it to have zero motor timing it doesn't have a flashing light on it when it's in zero timing mode so it won't necessarily be suitable for a lot of blinky classes so check with your local track whether they're happy for you to use this speed controller in their blinky class. So installation on this is fairly straightforward. Out of the box it does come with multicoloured wires but I've chosen to replace mine with black because all racers know that black wires are faster. Um, but even though it's a fairly large speed controller by modern standards, slightly larger than some of the high-end racing speed controllers which do cost around four times as much, there's still enough space for it to fit on the removable electronics plate in this B6.3. The speed controller is here, this is the sensor cable the uh, A, B and C cables to the motor, the power cables, uh, the capacitor pack, the twin capacitor that comes with it as standard, and of course the power switch and the setup button here. So the first step to do after you've wired the speed controller into your car is to set up the throttle calibration. It's very important to make sure that there is no settings on the throttle. So make sure that the trim is at zero, any expo is switched off, any limiters are switched off. Ideally you want to be starting from a fresh model memory just so that you don't have anything else obscuring the normal full movement of the throttle. The only exception to that is that with Futaba radios like I use, Hobbywing recommend that you reverse the throttle channel. Uh, so that's supposed to work better with them. So that's the only thing that I've done. Anyway, the process is fairly straightforward. I've disconnected the fans that are in the car so you don't have too much noise going on in the background. Uh, first step is to switch on the power of the transmitter. You should be able to hear that beeping in the background. And then we are going to push down on the set button, the small red set button, and power up the speed control at the same time. And you can hear that beeping there, which is actually coming through the motor. That shows that it's in calibration mode. First step is one press on the button for neutral. Now full throttle and push the button again. And full brake and push the throttle again. Push the button again, sorry. So that's now calibrated. Um, I'll just demonstrate that. I'll lift it off the ground so it doesn't launch off anywhere. You should hopefully be able to see the lights change as it goes to full throttle. Green there showing full throttle and the red showing part and now in the brake direction. Red showing partial, green showing full brake and with no LEDs at neutral. So that is now successfully calibrated to the transmitter. Next step is programming and Hobbywing give two different ways of programming this speed controller. One of which just uses the set button and the other one would use an optional program card. I'll start off by showing you how to do the programming through the set button just quickly. So you don't need your transmitter for this, the transmitter doesn't need to be on. Uh, you do need to have the speed controller connected to the power source though. So to do the programming via the set button, again you're going to push and hold on the red set button on the switch but we're going to hold it a lot longer until we start seeing green lights I'll show you now. So we're not interested in those red lights but we're interested in the green lights 
and the green light shows which of the various setting modes you are in. That's the fourth setting. The long beep is for the fifth. That's the sixth. And that's the seventh, and I'll lift up at that. Now we're setting the seventh adjustment on the speed controller, which is initial brake force. As you can see, I'm getting one red flash on this. This means that I'm currently on setting one for initial brake force, which is the same as equaling the drag brake. If I wanted to change that, I will just press the button once to cycle through to the next option. And that shows that I'm on option two for setting seven. If I pressed again, three beeps. Option three for setting seven. I'll just cycle back round to option one. Confirmation B that it's option one. And if I switch off, that has confirmed that setting in the speed controller. It does mean that if I want to set up anything else on the speed controller, there are nine options that you can set on it. I would need to power on again, pressing and holding the red button until I got the number of green flashes I wanted and go through the same process and switch off at the end of each programming step. Although this works, it's quite time consuming. So there is an alternative way of programming the speed controller, which I'm going to show you now. The much quicker and easier way of programming the speed controller is to use one of Hobbywing's LED program cards, which they don't supply with this one as standard, but they do supply with quite a lot of other speed controllers. And if you do need to buy one separately, they're quite cheap. They're about £10 um, and they make it a lot easier to do it. One thing to bear in mind when you are plugging uh, the program card in, which looks a little like this, is to make sure you plug it in the correct way. So on the top of the program card, there's two sockets. Uh, the one on the right hand side, as you're looking at it from the front, is the one you want to be using. And it's important to make sure that the signal wire, which is the white wire on most speed controllers, and particularly on this speed controller, is also going to the right. So we're going to plug that in to the correct hole on the program card. We don't need to have the transmitter on for this, but obviously we do need to have the battery connected. So again, we, and by the way, this is the receiver cable from the speed controller. There's no separate cable to connect to the quick run like some of the speed controllers do. So you just need to disconnect this from the receiver and put it into the program card instead. Uh, we'll go ahead and power up the speed controller. It's just booting up now. And now it's showing me the settings. This is the item in the program on the left-hand side, and this is the value on the right-hand side. So currently this is uh, defaulting to item one, which is the running mode, and my setting is value one, which is forward and brake only. So this is the perfect setting for racing. Generally speaking, you don't want reverse enabled if you're racing, often it's against the rules, and even if it's not against the rules, it's pretty bad etiquette to start backing your car out in front of other drivers on the track. Uh, there is a third option as well, uh, which is forward and reverse only on this speed controller, and that's something that you might use if you're running a crawler, um, although I've never tried running this one with a crawler myself. So if you ever want to change a value on the LED program card, you push the value button and cycle through, uh, and press OK to confirm, and that will have stored that setting. To go to the next item, item two, which in this case is the drag brake force. Ignore what's written on the label here, it's for a different speed controller. Um, the drag brake force, um, again, I set it to zero by default on all of my racing cars. If you were to increase the drag brake on your speed controller, so example, value two on the speed controller is 5%, value three is 10%. What it does is it means that when you lift off the throttle completely, a small amount of braking is applied to the motor. Uh, this makes the car feel a little bit more like old uh, brushed racing motors would have felt. Um, and certainly in the early days of brush, this was something that we used quite a lot. Over time, most of us have got used to not running drag brake or running a lot less than we would do normally. So it's a setting that I would use with caution. It might make the car feel easier to drive but one of the risks is that it can especially on a two-wheel drive buggy like this one it can actually make the uh, rear tires lock up 
which is not great on the way into a corner. And also mid corner, you'll find that the car is always slowing down. So if your style is a bit smoother and you want to be carrying speed through the corner, having drag brake is, is not a great setting to have. So my recommendation is to have setting uh, item two at value one. Item three on this speed controller is the low voltage cutoff. Um, out of the box, it's set to value four, which is three volts per cell. I think that's a bit too low. I'd recommend either value five, which is 3.2 volts per cell, uh, or option six, the highest value, which is 3.4 volts per cell. Again, when we first started running uh, LiPo batteries, we were happier to run lower cutoffs. Now most people are running 3.2 volts or higher. Uh, it won't affect you in the race. It just means that your battery is a bit safer if you do end up getting a bit low uh, on the voltage. Helps your batteries to last longer. If you're running uh, NIM cells still, then you would set this to disable, which is value one. Uh, option four, item four on the program card uh, is the start mode or the punch control. So out of the box, this is set to seven, which is punchy. It's on a range from one to nine. Because I'm running this in a two wheel drive buggy, with an 8.5 turn motor and it's the British winter, which means there's not really any grip, even at the best of times. I've got this right down at the lowest level of one, just to mean that the throttle response is nice and smooth, makes the car a lot easier to drive. Generally speaking, low grip and fast motors, you would run a bit less punch and high grip and slow motors, you'd run a bit more punch. Item five is the maximum braking force. So that means that when you're pulling full brakes, it says how much braking power you're going to get. Out of the box, it's set to 75%. I prefer to set mine to 100%, which is value four, just because you never know how much braking you might need. And it's nice to have full control uh, on the transmitter of how much braking you apply rather than be limited by the speed controller. Item six is the maximum reversing force. Now, even though I don't use reverse, I'm in the habit of setting the max reverse force to 100% as well, which is value four on this speed controller. Um, again, that's just related to experience with older Hobbywing speed controllers that used to have a bit of a bug in them, where if you didn't have the reverse force set to maximum, it limited your braking. So by habit, I've always been setting this at 100%. I don't know if that's still a bug or not, but it makes no harm to, to have the setting at maximum anyway. Item seven is the initial brake force. So that's the amount of braking that you have when you first start applying the brakes. So not at neutral, but when you first start to pull back on the brakes. Uh, out of the box, it's set to 0% as the initial brake force, which is value two on the programmer. I always set it to value one, which is to equal the drag brake force which effectively in my case is zero, but it does mean that if I was to apply drag bake, it means that the speed controller is not going to apply less brake at uh, the first braking movement than it would do at drag brake. It just keeps things a bit smoother. Um, you can also set this to higher values, either 20 or 40% if you want the brakes to feel a lot more aggressive from the start. Um, again, not something I'd want to have on a two wheel drive buggy. Item eight is the throttle range. Uh, by default, it's set to value two, which is 9%. Um, there's two other options, 6% and 12%. Uh, this is something that I rarely change. Uh, in theory, if you have a very high quality radio, um, and I would say that my radio is quite high quality, you can run it at value one. It just means that the uh, response is a bit quicker. You need less stick movement or, or uh, trigger movement before you actually enable the throttle on the speed controller, 12% uh, setting, which would be value three, is for lower quality radio, where if you're struggling and the speed controller doesn't seem to want to stay in neutral, you can widen the throttle range just so that it takes more movement on the transmitter before it even tries to go anywhere. And the final value that you can modify is item nine on this speed controller, which is the timing setting. Now, this is quite an important one to leave at one, in my opinion. This is something that was on the very early uh, Hobbywing brushless speed controllers. And this is going back to when we first had uh, brushless motors. The brushless motors didn't have very much timing adjustment actually on their own end bell. And people were experimenting with adding timing in the speed controller itself. It's 2022 now. The motors we use have moved on quite a lot. Almost every motor that you buy now has lots and lots of timing adjustment on the actual end bell of the motor. Uh, so I would strongly recommend that this is left at value one, which is zero degrees timing 
all the time, never increase to anything else. The reason being that if you start messing around with timing on the speed controller and then start adding timing on the motor, you can get yourself into a bit of a difficult situation every chance that you'll start to blow the motor because it's overtimed. And you certainly, if you've overtimed it to the extent that you're gonna blow motors, you're probably not getting the most performance out of it anyway. So leave the timing at zero. Uh, and just if you want to do adjustments for timing, just do the adjustments on the motor end bell. Um, and if you do do adjustments on the motor end bell, again, just do them in very small increments, you know, a couple of degrees a time. Don't do five, 10 degree changes on a motor end bell timing. It can make a really big difference. And the line between a motor that runs smoothly and quickly and a motor that's going to cook is quite small. Uh, so do take care on that. So I hope you find this guide useful. I'll put a link to the instruction manual below and I'll also list my preferred setup for two-wheel drive modified buggy racing uh, below as well. If you've got any questions or comments, then also please leave them below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.